Hello guys, this is Danish Khalil, uh, Enablers Lead Ambassador and Head of Karachi. Welcome you all uh, in this very interesting session uh, where we have uh, Mr. Paul Baron. He is the CEO and founder of uh, the Chat Agency and Chat Marketing University. He is uh, in the space of digital marketing since 2008 and uh, He's an e-commerce brand owner selling on Amazon since 2015. So it's been uh, six years. He's a million dollar Amazon seller, international keynote speaker on chatbots and influencer marketing. Very popular figure. He has been well known uh, in many uh, Amazon related conferences and trainings and uh, uh, workshops all around the globe. Uh, he is uh, currently a uh, chat marketing automation consultant as well. His brands have received consulting from Shark Tanks, Barbara Corcoran, and have been featured on the Rachel Ray show as well in Forbes magazine, televised and uh, print news and in and national magazine and blogs. As founder and CEO of Chat Marketing University, Paul teaches messenger marketing automation strategies, which leverage many chat for product launching, ranking, list building and review generation to Amazon and e-commerce sellers. Uh, so welcome paul i hope you're doing great i am it's uh i don't know what the weather is like there it's getting to be fall here so cold um you know we had some snow last week so i don't know where you're at in pakistan i mean you know it's very you know whether you're up in the mountain area i'm sure it's probably experiencing the same weather there too yeah we are also experiencing a bit of winter here a bit of cold uh, at night especially so yeah. the weather is really pleasant here in pakistan most of the parts already started uh, winters yeah so okay so i welcome you paul and this uh, beautiful community of e-commerce by enablers as well as uh, enablers uh, facebook page everybody's watching you we have over a million uh, member group now and uh, we have more than million facebook uh, followers on our page so it's a huge community uh, it's the largest community uh, in, in this space of uh, e-commerce in Pakistan. So we welcome you here in a group. So, uh, Paul, I would like to ask you about uh, the current situation uh, in the Amazon space where uh, private label sellers are struggling due to low margins, very low sales in UK and European region, mm -hmm. high logistic costs from China, and so much uh, coming in again, you know, energy, energy crisis in China, prices going to rise up again, raw material prices already have risen. So right. how do you see the quarter four of 2021 Oof. in your in your experience? Man, you know, I've been talking to a lot of sellers. Um, I don't know if you know Emma Shermer Tamir. Um, Era is, you know, she runs marketing by Emma. It's a copying a copywriting agency, good friends of mine. And so I've right. um, been talking with people like that, you know, Tim Jordan. It, we're seeing like we're seeing a lot of people delay what they would normally do in Q4 because they just don't have the inventory. You know that the stock isn't coming in you know they have um like for example like us we had placed our our stuff is very summer seasonal and our in our summer order that was supposed to be that get us through the summer that was supposed to be delivered in may was delivered in june or sorry um may or june it was delivered in september like the second week of september so i'm hearing and seeing a lot of sellers not really sure whether they're even going to have stock, you know, for Q4. Yeah. Um, we got an email. I'm not sure if you got this. I mean, you mentioned the, the energy crisis in China. Yeah. Um, we got an email from our manufacturing team that they like, everything is going to take an additional 20 days. And this is off of their, you know, when we, when we placed our order for the summer season, yeah. it was supposed to be 60 to 70 days. Yeah. Normally our production time is about 30 to 45 production time and then from there you know depending on how we ship if we're shipping by sea it's about average four weeks ish or so you know on sea if we did air then it would be a week and a half in air and then it would however long it would take amazon to check it in um so that would be what a, a normal or normal including shipping is about 60 days what we could expect you know two months um but we we saw 180 days and so that means if, if, if they're telling us, you know, they told us 45, 60 day production time, yeah. 
and then we see 120 day 180 day 160 day yeah. production time and they're saying 20 extra days that tells me i'm going to triple that number like okay you're saying 20 that means it's going to be another two months most likely so coming into q4 um the sellers that are going to do well are the, are the ones that have stock that have you know starting in the pandemic last year that i think that i've talked to a lot of people that they're like you know what screw that we're just going to order a massive amount of inventory and you know the problem there there's multiple problems there one um costs a lot of money a lot of people don't have that you know like for us we 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 started everything on, on we had no money um i had to put everything on a credit on, on a credit card when we started because i didn't have any money i was working two jobs and um so we've been kind of taking all of our money taking the profit roll it back into the business take the profit roll it back into the business i'm sure a lot of your members do this um yeah. it's it's you know you self-fund it's what you have to do and so for people like us that do that we don't have a lot of access to capital you're not able to do those big orders and even now like if if you're trying to order now for q4 you're not going to get it it just won't be it unless you have some relationship with say like if you're selling in america and you have a us-based manufacturer that has quick and short lead times um that's what i'm saying basically the, the there's so many issues one being the ports in china the second is the issues that you know the ports in america obviously you have the energy you know the energy crisis plus the raw goods shortages um it's going to be a challenge and you know fortunately we have inventory um Q4 doesn't really matter for us though, like because we're so summer seasonal. June is our Q4, and and uh, so we're good. We're good through Chinese New Year. Is I'm um, that's the that's the blessing in disguise that I'm <laughs> that I'm saying for our business. Great, <clears throat> because uh, but there are so many uh, people obviously in our member uh, in, in our group. Uh, there's so many members who have budget constraints. Mm -hmm. So how do you think this strategy, if we can source locally? From, yeah. the, uh, from, from the local country where we are selling. How does this strategy sound to you? Because uh, I think this will save us a lot of time. Maybe yeah. replenishment time could be faster, quicker, and uh, we'll be able to at least uh, restock uh, timely and may try to avail quarter four uh, in, a bet, in a better manner. If yeah. we rely completely on China, then obviously it will be a really poor situation, especially for new sellers yep. uh, who are just about to launch. Mm -hmm. that's the that's the hard part is if if you're a new seller if you're just about to launch you already have your inventory then you're in a good spot but if you don't have your inventory yet and you're waiting on it and you're manufacturing in china um i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest you're gonna miss q4 like you won't hit it um it's just not at this point i don't see a possibility because we're already what is today um the 21st, 21st yeah 21st yeah. Of, of of august of october so we're already in Q4, you know, Black Friday is a month away. So if your stuff isn't already on the water now, if it's not at the port, most likely you won't get it because it generally takes, you know, two to three weeks on, on, on water. Then normally it's like a one to two week normally at the port. Now we're seeing months, you know, I talked to, you know, Kevin, Kevin King, like he's, he's been waiting to like, his stuff has been at port for like, 90 days wow yeah so it's it's crazy so for the new sellers if you're trying to get in now let's say that you're looking at doing private label i wouldn't look at private label i would look at this now take this this technically this would be a violation of facebook's terms of service you can't do this anymore but there are a lot of like you could take you could buy things on amazon and then arbitrage those on other marketplaces like it used to be able to do this on Facebook where you could buy you could list something on Facebook marketplace that you see on Amazon and just list it a little bit higher. And I know of people that were doing that, just arbitraging and making a couple thousand dollars a month just doing that, where it was really drop shipping is they would order it on Amazon and ship it to the, to the person. Now, that is a violation of Facebook's terms of service. So I would look for other marketplaces. Um, Craigslist, for example, you could do stuff like that. But I would just get creative and if I need it, like if I was in a situation where I, I needed money, I needed to make money for my family and I knew that I couldn't get my supplies in, I would start looking like you said, look at local manufacturing, potentially what what's available or, you know, what what's available for arbitrage sales. Can you buy something low 
and then sell it high? Yeah. Can you drop ship? Mm -hmm. can, you know, there's yeah. all sorts of things that you could do. Okay. Um, basically, जो ये हम discuss कर रहे हैं इसमें important चीज हमारी audience के लिए आप सब लोगों के लिए सुनने के लिए ये है कि quarter four में जो इस वक्त की point है या जो सबसे बड़ी struggle चल रही है that is inventory is not available. Inventory stuck है port पे नहीं पहुंच रही है delays हैं China से shipment में delays हैं ये एक सबसे बड़ा problem चल रहा है तो उसको जहन में रखते हुए रैपिड लॉन्च की जो स्ट्रेटेजी इनेबलर्स आपको बताता है या बीबीएल की स्ट्रेटेजी बताता है कि लोकल सोर्सिंग कर लें ये बेस्ट स्ट्रेटेजी है आप सब लोगों के लिए जो भी इसको सुन रहे हैं जो भी क्वार्टर फोर में लॉन्चेस की तरफ जाना चाह रहे हैं सो पॉल आई वॉज जस्ट सेंग समिंग इन इन माई लैंग्वेज लोकल लैंग्वेजरस्टैंड ओके सो इफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी हैव स्टॉक एंड ऑडियंस लिस्निंग टू यू दे हैव स्टॉक दे आर रेगुलर सेलर्स एक्टिव लिस्टिंग रैंकिंग वेल what uh key launching or ranking techniques you would like to give to the audience that you need to keep these uh, ppc tips and tricks in mind you need to keep your a cause this much follow these strategies for external marketing and bringing external traffic to amazon what are the best current strategies to to launch the product and rank it well well i can yeah i mean i can go through i have the presentation i can kind of go through if you'd like um i can talk a little bit about that um, yeah, let me skip, I just shared it. Yeah, let me skip a few slides. So I'm gonna share my screen here and okay. Okay, cool. So you can see now. Okay, yeah. great. All <clears throat> right. Um one second here. I gotta escape out of full screen mode. There we go. That's better. Now I can see. Okay, you guys can see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, so yep, um, you already gave my intro. That was us in the Rachel ratio. We've had a bunch of exposure. I'm just putting these in here so you guys know that I'm not making stuff up. Like this is stuff that's actually worked in our in our business. So all of these placements we've gotten because of our efforts driving external traffic, really. When we started, when we launched on Amazon, our number one goal was not to be the best on Amazon. Our, our goal was to build a real brand and leverage Amazon so that we could grow beyond Amazon. And so everything that we've done from day one has been looking at Amazon as just one channel, um, one source of revenue out of a sea of revenue. So in order to get into like driving external traffic, I want to go through a couple best practices first. And like, this is mindset stuff. And let me know if you'd like me to stop talking so you can translate at all. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Continue, continue, that's fine. So best practices in, in general, you need to understand <laughs> like who you're marketing to and what it is that they care about, right? Um, you need to know your objectives. Is your objective building a list off of Amazon? Is that one of your objectives? That's always one of my objectives. Is your objective getting new sales or repeat sales or getting reviews? Um, you, When you're going into any sort of strategy, you always need to have something that you measure against so that you can know whether or not you're being successful. And quite frankly, just having increased sales is not always the best metric because in increased sales, for example, result from building lists and building an audience that, that that follows your brand and nurturing that audience and, and, and all those sorts of things. And so um, growing an audience, nurturing an audience, communicating with that group. So like enablers, right? You guys have a fantastic audience. You have a fantastic group of people. It's the same exact thing. Um, you take that exact concept and then apply it to your brand on Amazon. So the process that you go through when you've identified, when you really identified exactly what you're trying to do, who you're marketing to is the biggest thing is that you really need to make sure that, that your customer experience is not just easy. You're not just re reducing friction, you know, that you're keeping focus on your, object on your objective. You're consistent, you're scalable, you focus on automation, you have plans for follow-up, all those things. Don't just think about the customer experience um, being easy, but you want to think about, and what I mean by customer experience is not just like uh, customer service, right? A customer experience is the experience that anybody has with your brand. Amazon from the get-go has been focused on customer creating customer ecstasy or creating um, delighting their customers. So everything that they do is built around the idea that that as an Amazon Prime member, and this was even before Prime, that's why they created Prime, was because it would make their customers happy. And everything that they do is designed to make their end customers, the people that buy things on Amazon, happy. That's why sometimes our jobs are really hard, right? Because in their goal, they're they're serving their customers. So you need to think through 
how can you do these things? How can you drive traffic or build a list or do any of those things? You need to make it so that there's as little friction as possible, that you have one clear call to action whenever you have those objectives, right? You're focusing on that one main thing. And then obviously, again, for growth and scalability, you need to make sure that it's consistent and that it's automatable somehow. Now, when you go into asking people for anything, now I'm going to get into what I mean by this is let's say you're asking people to sign up on your list, on your email list. That is one ask. Another ask would be, let's say you approach an Amazon influencer and you want them to promote your product. That's another ask. The number one key to asking anybody of anything is you need to make a win for them. You need to make it better for them than it is for you. The other thing you need to focus on is don't make it about money. Don't start it in the money conversation right out of the get-go. You need to make sure that you're thinking about the value to that person that you're talking to and you're putting yourself in their shoes. So what I mean by this is, for example, we when we partnered with uh, the first Olympian that we partnered with, we've partnered with a couple now. Um, the first Olympian that we partnered with, um, her husband, um, I almost said works in the NBA, but technically he does. He's a, he's a basketball player. He plays in the NBA. He's really good. Um, his name is Drew. Um, her name is Lauren. And um, we put together a pitch for them. Basically, our pitch was we wanted to work with them. And so our pitch to them was we want to create a custom print design of our product for you in conjunction with you that we will donate 100 percent of the proceeds of this product to a charity of your choice so that's a big win for them because they don't have capabilities to produce our products right they don't know anything about that they're athletes and they have a charity and they wanted to donate some money to their charity so what we did was we ended up Again, we partnered with them. We, we went back and forth on the design phase with them, created a custom product specifically with them and for them, and then worked with them to do the marketing to promote this. Um, and that was an example of creating a bigger win. Now, you also need to think about this for all of your customers, whatever that may be. And it doesn't matter if they're super famous and they're Olympians or if they're just you know your regular everyday customer. Why would that person want to give you their email address, right? If you're trying to build an audience list that you can that you can email to drive traffic to Amazon when you launch new products or you can text message them or send a broadcast in many chat, why would that person want to join your your list? Why would they want to follow you? You need to make sure that you put yourselves in their yourself in their shoes and you think about it from their angle. If it seems like you're asking a ton, right? And you're going to get a lot of win, but they're not going to get any they're not going to work with you. For example, we have a we have a client that we're building out um, an influencer program for. And this particular client is really stingy. Um, like they only want to give like a $5 product for like basically three months worth of work from influencers, right? And they're having, not surprisingly, they're having a really hard time signing up influencers. Why? Because $5 isn't worth their time. And it's actually quite insulting in my opinion. Um, and in fact, with this particular client, I'm going to be having a meeting with them coming up soon and basically tell them that they either need to change and do more or we won't be able to work with them because, quite frankly, they're not giving it. They're not giving enough. They're looking at these people as if they're just tools that they can, you know, use to promote their brand. And quite simply, nobody in the world wants to be looked at as a tool or a means to an end. Every single person on the planet has a unique story. We each have our own strengths, our own weaknesses, our own hopes and our fears, and every single person needs to be treated with respect so that if you're wanting to partner with them and you start off on the respectful relationship building level where you understand that that person has a lot of value that they can add to your business, you're going to find you're going to be able to build a, a team. Say, again, I'm referencing influencers. That's one method of traffic building or even just email list, right? If you do that and you treat people with respect and you think about how you can make it a bigger win for them, you are always going to win. Just think if, if you had the ability to help every single person on the planet just once, just do something kind for them. How many friends would you have? How many how, how much help would you get in return? It's really it's really simple. So think about think about people first. Don't make it about money, because if you make it only about money, let's say that somebody only wants to work with you. They don't care about your products. All they want is to get paid. That's not somebody that you want to work with because they're going to misrepresent your brand. And we've had that happen. So another best practice, like I mentioned earlier, this is a primary goal in my businesses. 
audience building, not just building, but nurturing that audience. It doesn't matter if you build an audience, right? But if you never communicate with them, there it's not going to be any value to you. But audience building and nurturing should always be a primary goal. And there's a lot of ways that we can do that on Amazon as Amazon sellers. Um, this comes back to a lot of what I think about building audiences and, and, and how I approach brand building is based in actual data science, right? Um, so we know, according to the Harvard Business Review, that acquiring new customers is anywhere from five to 25 times more expensive than retaining an existing one. So think about it in, in this terms, right? Your Amazon ACoS. If you're doing a paid, if you're doing a you know, PPC on Amazon, the PPC prices are just going through the roof now because one, it's Q4. Two, we have all these aggregators with hundreds of millions of dollars just pouring into the marketplace. And so if we're trying to get you know, more sales, um, really, you have to be advertising on Amazon. Like that's just become a necessary evil. So that's one, you know, customer acquisition cost. The other customer acquisition cost would be intangible things like the, the money that you've spent on your branding and your logo on your website, any, any extra work that you pay to do for social media, that's a hard cost too. So we know that acquiring a new customer costs anywhere from five to 25 times more than retaining an existing one. And this little bit at the bottom, that if you increase customer retention rate by 5%, you can increase your profits by 25 to 95%. So not just retention rate. So let's think about it this way. Uh, repeat purchase. That's, that would be a retention. So if you have the ability to, and it doesn't matter if you have a single use product like us, or you have, it's obviously a lot easier if you have a consumable product that people use over and over and over. That makes a lot more sense in these scenarios and it's a lot easier to see. But we do this too. We have one of our unique selling propositions with our brand is that you only need to buy, you know, one or two of our products per child ever. And, um, you know, our main core line products, we have a lot, a lot of ancillary products that people can purchase, but our goal is to sell to the same customer and convert that customer into a super fan, a raving fan that buys everything we sell because they love us. It's like a limited edition release, right? That's what we're going for. Other, other things to remember, like I mentioned earlier, Amazon is a single channel. It is not the only channel. It's not the only channel that you should be focusing on. Um, obviously, we have other marketplaces, you know, walmart.com um, that you can get into. Everybody can get into that mostly. Um, target.com, you know, it's available by invite only. There's other, you know, wholesale channels like fair.com. There's a ton of other channels online and obviously your own website. And my main point here is that you don't own an Amazon business. I don't own an Amazon business. Whatever your business is, it's your business. It's your brand. You are leveraging Amazon. Amazon is leveraging you. Amazon is using you to grow their platform and you are using Amazon. And it, ideally, it should be a mutually beneficial relationship. Most of the time, it's a lot more benefited to Amazon. I'm not going to lie. So I hear this a lot in the space where people say, well, I'm an Amazon business owner. No, Amazon is the only Amazon business owner. So I'm going to get into points of discovery now. Um, did you guys, did you want to pause and ask questions or, or pause before I get into points of discovery and, and way that, you know, like SEO, search engine optimization, that sort of stuff? Yeah, I think uh, we don't have uh, pretty much questions yet. So I think you should complete it and then we can take some questions and ask accordingly. Okay, sounds good. So um, now I went through best practices, right? So that's a lot of mindset things that you need to think through in order to look at, you know, external traffic as a real good viable source. Um, what I'm going to go through now are different points of discovery. So these are things where, you know, somebody who's never heard of your brand before, these are ways that they can first hear about you, right? So First and foremost, a well-optimized website. Search engine optimization, you know, you most of us should be familiar with that. But all it's about, it's, you know, it's the same thing that we do on Amazon. The search engine optimization for Amazon is we're playing with the A9 algorithm. And we know that on, on Amazon, a lot that goes into that algorithm is, is purchasing, you know, purchasing tied to keyword, you know, queries, um, click-through rates, conversion rates, reviews, all those sorts of things. That's what optimize that listing. But your website, how well optimized is your website? How, how well are you coming up on, on search? And some of the ways that we optimize our website are both the strategic blogs and the content and the formatting that we do on the blogs. There's two methods of blogs. We can get featured in other people's blogs. For example, one of the ways that we do this is by using HARO or help a reporter out by Cision. And I can do a live, I can walk through Haro if you want, um, Donish, or I can just talk about it. It's up to you. Um, and I can walk you kind of through the process that we do pitches on Haro. 
would that be beneficial do you think uh i think keep it brief keep it short that would okay. be better i'll do the overview and if you guys want to see a walkthrough at the end then i can do that um so haro stands for help a reporter out and really what that is is it's a site that anybody can use for free and the free version sends you an e man, email either every day or every week and in the email it's literally like every single pitch that a reporter or a blogger or a news a journalist is looking for a source and right now there's a lot of people looking for gift guides so this is a great thing that you can do right now for free go to haro <laughs> help a reporter out by cision and then you can start getting those emails delivered into your inbox, um, which provide you with backlinks to either your Amazon listing or your website, which will increase your search rank. One of the key factors in search engine optimization is inbound links to your site. And the more authority that uh, site that's linking to you has, so like, for example, we're listed as the best product in our category by parents.com. That link goes to Amazon. Now that link going to Amazon helps us rank better on Amazon and on Google. Our Amazon listing ranks on Google and it ranks higher in Amazon search because we have a lot of external traffic and a lot of external links pointing to that listing. Now we got the parents.com listing actually by pitching a Haro pitch. Um, surprisingly, most of the time on Haro, it's like a, a lot of like low tier blogs mommy bloggers and that sort of thing. But occasionally you're going to find really good things like parents.com. Another great way to build uh, inbound links for your for your for either your website or your Amazon listing would be using press releases. And I'm sure you guys all know Noam Farrar, and I highly recommend his his agency, PR Reach. He's, it's a fantastic company and way better than writing it yourself and, and distributing it yourself. They've got a, a whole thing in place. So I mentioned, so that that's blogs that other people write about you, right? So pitching a uh, a reporter on Haro, that's a blog somebody writes about you. But if you want to optimize your website, you also need to have great content on your site. And um, I can dive into like exactly how we structure our content if you guys have questions. Um, but right now I'll just mention, you know, you need to be blogging. You need to be, you need to make sure that it's structured well for SEO, that your, your, um, all of your header tags are, are formatted correctly, that your alt tags on your images are formatted correctly that you're saving your images. When you upload your image to your site, you save it as uh, like a search engine indexable file name. So for example, if I sold um, like this Yeti cup, right? Then I would do like 32 ounce Yeti or 32 ounce um, insulated uh, coffee mug for some for drinking cold drinks or something like that, whatever, whatever my keywords were. And I knew that people were looking for like a 32 insulated thermos style mug or Yeti. I would name that image. That's what I would name the image, like .jpeg or something. Then the alt text would help it index on, on, on Google. So there's just a couple little points there, and I can dive in more deep if you guys have questions. But the, suffice to say, SEO is a massive topic, and there's no way that we could get through even scratching the surface in two hours if we talked only about that. Um, some benefits of SEO is that we ourselves – are the number one re recommended brand in seven out of 10 best of lists on page one in Google search. And we've got there through a mixture of the Haro pitches and through building out our influencer network that helps promote us to these types of things. So that's that's the how we got on those best of lists. The, the crazy thing about best of lists is once you start getting on a few, then the other ones start seeing how they're placing you and then they place you on their list too. And generally, it's about the same. Like we're between the top five, you know, spots one and three on, on the majority of these lists. The other benefit that we have of SEO is that we now have page one ranking on Google. Our website does. Um, we rank on Google uh, our website for our number one search term. And that's just been through years and years of hard work. Now, SEO is not something that happens overnight. Um, if you're familiar with it, it takes a lot of work, a lot of time. But this is a long, a long game. This is something that you'll start seeing benefits from in a year, two years, three years. You won't start seeing this massive uptick in benefit for Q4. But that leads us to ads. Ads are another great point of discovery. Obviously, there's advertising on Amazon, but I'm going to be talking about external traffic, so I'm not going to talk about Amazon PPC. I'm not an Amazon PPC expert. We have an agency that, that does that for us, so I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm an external traffic expert, so we when we talk about ads and points of discovery, I look, I think about things like Google, social media. So obviously social media is, that's a huge bucket there, right? So we have Facebook, Instagram, which are the same company. So Facebook and Instagram, then we have Twitter, we have Pinterest, 
We have TikTok. Um, those are the primary ones. Now, I don't really do Twitter um, and obviously YouTube. So the big ones that I would I recommend for social media, if you're just getting started started out in any type of advertising, um, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna say look at TikTok. If you can do TikTok videos and you can partner with influencers on TikTok, those videos perform, those ads perform really, really well. Um, something about TikTok, people just are more ready to buy than Facebook or, or Instagram. I don't know why, but obviously there's social media ads and there's print advertising, television and radio advertising. And if you want more information on this, I highly recommend the course. Um, Ezra Firestone has a course in Smart Marketer. Um, he has a ton of courses, but one is on external traffic all in advertising. And I have actually our team that runs ads for our businesses. They all go through that course. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to go into really big detail here. I'm going to be talking more about chat marketing at the end, the kind of what you can do, but this is just, again, a kind of a broad overview of points of discovery. Now with social media, I am going to be talking about um, kind of dividing it into paid advertising or paid placements on social media and then organic placements. Um, inside social media in general, you want to make sure that, well, first and foremost, you need to understand who your audience is. You need to understand what it is that they care about. And it's not just your products, right? So does your person, the people that are buying from you, um, you know, where do they shop? Um, how big is, how big are their families on average? You know, are they, are, are they married? Are they single? Is it, is the, is the primary person that's pur purchasing from you? Is it a male or is it a female? How old are they? Um, all of these things you need to understand so that you can make social media work for you so that you can target those audiences, right? Because let's say that you assume that your audience is women between the ages of 18 and 25, and you're selling a beauty product, and you think that those are the people that are buying from you. But in, in, in reality, you find out that actually the people that are buying from you are women between the ages of 45 and 60. The messaging that you're going to use be, for women between the ages of 45 and 60 is going to be a lot different than the messaging that you're using for women between 18 and 25. So understanding your audience is essential to this step because you, the whole goal here is that you want to create hooks. So you want to create different things that are going to be thumb stoppers. And those are hooks. Those are those are things that are going to stop people from from scrolling their feed, you know, while they're watching, you know, Squid Games or something. People are, you know, on their phones looking. So they're distracted already. And what you what you want is you want to create something that has such a resonance with your audience that it causes them to stop without you asking them to stop, right? It causes them to think, wow, this is so me, or wow, this is so my sister, I have to share this with her, something along those lines. Um, one thing that you can very easily do inside ads specifically is you could split test, uh, I, not massaging, messaging, um, <laughs> split test your messaging in your ad copy. So copy is you know the, the, the stuff that you're writing and as well as within any sort of marketing funnels that you have. Um, and you can even split test this organically too. So a organic split test would be you have, you know, let's say you've been posting for a while. I go through my posts and I see, okay, which ones performed well, which ones have gotten some shares, which ones get comments, which ones have gotten a lot of engagement. And then you start doing more posts like that. And really all that is, is you're just providing content that your people are interested in. Um, again, that's organic traffic with engaging shareable content. And um, for more on this, I recommend Moolah. My friend Rachel has a course called Grow Your Audience. Her business is called Moolah. And it teaches you all about how you can get amazing organic content. And the biggest thing, again, that the way that I think about content and creating content for our people is, again, first, you have to understand them. You have to understand their pain points. You have to understand what makes them cry, what makes them laugh. And then you want to put together things that are going to do those, trigger those emotions, that are going to make them laugh, that are going to make them cry, like not sad, angry cry, but like, oh, that's so sweet, if it's a, if it's appropriate for your brand. And Rachel does a really good job of explaining how to do that. But other than, you know, if you, she has a bunch of free stuff. If you click that link or go to that link, there's, um, I think there's a bunch of downloads that she has for like um, conversation starters that's really good. So this is my basic formula for social media. You need to have social proof off of Amazon and your content. If you're social proof plus your content, that gives you authority. The more authority you have with people, the more trust you have. As people trust you, you're going to make sales, which will lead to long-term success. And this is the foundation point for all of our social media. 
all of our off Amazon work is all built around building that authority so that we can build that trust and gain those sales. And this is one of those things that as you're, as you're doing this again, it's a slow build over time. It's not something that you're going to see money in the bank right away. So here's some proof with our, one of our branded uh, Giphy channels. Um, our following on Instagram is only about 13,000, 14,000 people or so. But on average, we get about 3 million story views. And this is a little hack that I found. You can create a branded Giphy channel that has to do with your brand. And you can share that with you know, your influencers or your followers, whatever. If they put those GIFs on their stories, which that's, you know, if you're familiar with Instagram, you can put GIFs on stories. Those GIFs from, come from Giphy. Um, you can upload your own GIFs by creating your own branded Giphy channel. And what we've seen is we generally get about 3 million story views every summer because of our network of influencers that are, that are showing our stuff. And this is fantastic. And again, um, Rachel tells you how to make awesome content in her course. So here's some points of uh, other points of discovery is influencer traffic. I have done a lot of talks on influencers, and I could do a more detailed talk on that if you'd like um, in the future. Just let me know. Um, and really, there's kind of two different flavors of influencers that I see. There's the Amazon affiliates that are, they're specific to Amazon. They write blogs and stuff. And then there's like the independent influencers. And what I look at, one way that you can find Amazon affiliates, um, if you say you're wanting to be featured in a best of list. So obviously Haro, right? Go to Haro. That's a great tip. If you're not doing it now, you should. The paid feature is only $50 a month. Um, and what that allows you to do is that allows you to search the database so you actually get a log into the site. Otherwise, it's just an email. And again, if you have time and you know more time than money, the email thing works just fine. Um, but in there, most of those people are actually Amazon affiliates because if they're you know specifically doing like a bet, like a like a gift guide for for Christmas, um, they're going to be making monet money monetizing that because of their their Amazon affiliate link. Um, so one way that I find affiliates if I'm not using Haro is I will do. Um, I'll put it in brackets and I'll find this at the end of my speech because I, I don't have it in my notes. Um, but um, basically I put in like such as it's like I put in quotes is a participant in, in Amazon Associates LLC, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember the exact term, but it's like a whole sentence that I put in quotes in, in Google search. And then I'll put in. So we sell we sell <clears throat> baby products that, you know, have to do with swimming. So I would do like swimming or baby after that. So it'd be, you know. So and so is the participant in the Amazon Associates program, um, and then I would put in like baby, or I would put in uh, you know like swaddle, or if I was selling like you know silicon spatula, I'd put in silicon spatula. Then that would return a whole bunch of sites that have lists or that are selling things you know silicon spatulas that also are Amazon Associates. That then you could go and email those people, and then there's the independent influencer route which those are the people that are all over social media. And again, like I have a ton of different content on this. I have a whole um, a module in Freedom Ticket all about that. So if you want more information, I would just refer you to the Freedom Ticket module because just for the sake of time. One of the benefits or, or the, the main benefits that I see with working with influencers is they give us powerful, prolific social proof. We gamify the promotion of our brand with them. Um, and when you gamify something, you turn it into a game, you're going to get a lot more participation. So we gamify the promotion of our brand and social media and through blogging, you know, all sorts of places. And really what we've done is we built an army of brand ambassadors that are promoting our products. So I'm gonna get into some actionable things that you can do right now. Um, if you are not using inserts and there's a lot of misunderstanding about inserts, I hear a lot of times that people are saying, well, you can't have something on your insert that directs away from Amazon. No, that is not true. It never says that on Amazon at all about inserts. If, if, you're, if you have read or heard that you can't direct traffic away from Amazon, that is true from Amazon.com. You can't in your buyer seller messaging, you can't direct them to your website, you know, that sort of stuff. You have to keep it on Amazon. But inside your packaging, you know, you can have them register their purchase for a warranty. And the, and the key points here are you need to have such an amazing insert, such an amazing call to action that it would be so irresistible that people would actually have to be morons not to take it up. So this is the breakdown of this insert and why I like it so much. The first thing is, and again, this is so simple, guys. Like anybody can do this. 
It's one call to action. This call to action is subscribe to GoPro. So how you would do this in your business, it's not a subscription, would be I would do register your purchase or register your blank, your whatever your brand name is, register your Yeti purchase or register your Yeti product or whatever it may be, right? And then that's the first thing. It's one simple call to action. You don't have you know three things that you're asking them to do. In your inserts, if you have inserts, which you should have inserts, you don't want to ask them to register their purchase and leave you know all of these things. Just ask them to do one thing. And then once they're in your funnel, then you can ask them to do more things. And this, this step here, two, there are four reasons why, four irresistible, thumb-stopping reasons why people should do that call to action. So that you're asking them, GoPro is asking them to subscribe. And they're giving you four reasons. One, unlimited cloud storage of your GoPro footage. Two, no questions asked camera replacement. Three, so let's let's modify this for your for for general Amazon businesses. One, uh, free, no questions asked, one year or two year lifetime warranty, right? So warranties don't work for every single product, but they are good hooks. Um, unlim- you know, free, no questions asked warranty, like that that sort of thing, right? They have unlimited cloud cloud storage. So so warranty. The second thing that I would probably put in is um, instant up to. $50 cash back or something like this. And the way that I would do this is I would have everyone wins a prize and it could, the prize is the $50, right? Will be a gift card to your site. Um, and it could be up to a certain amount. And I would make like, let's say you want to do up to $500 on site credit or something, make it so that it's like 0.001% chance of them winning um, that $500. And then the majority of people win like five bucks or something along those lines. Right. So that's, that's, that would be the, like the second and then you could do up to 50% off new product launches or up to 100% off new product launches if you do rebates for free. And then up to $100 in our monthly, you know, win, you know, be automatic entry into our, our monthly $100 drawing or something along those lines. Uh, but you get the point. You, there's four reasons. Don't just have one reason. Don't just do the, um, and don't do this. If you, have a, if you have an insert that says, satisfied with your product, leave a review. Don't like it? Give us a call. That is a violation of Amazon's terms of service because you are filtering via your insert. You're filtering reviews, and that will get you banned. That will get you suspended if Amazon sees that. So inserts themselves are not a violation. What you put on the insert can be a violation. If you are requiring people to leave a review in order to get the free thing, that is a violation, and you need to understand what the terms of service are in order to do that. So again, so we have one simple clear to a- clear call to action, four reasons why you should do it. And then on the right, we have two ways that you can go about how to do this, the call to action. Everyone should be, should know what a QR code is these days because of the pandemic. Um, if they don't, you have that link there at the bottom. It's, or it's very, very simple. So if you don't have inserts, do them. You need inserts because this is the lowest hanging fruit. From here, what we would do is we funnel all of this stuff through chat marketing. We funnel all that traffic through chat funnels to build our list. One of the things that um, you could do is you could have, if you don't want to do chat marketing, you could have that go to like a, a type, uh, like a type, uh, type form page or like a Google form, something along those lines. But anytime you get a purchase, that point of discovery, somebody discovers you on Amazon, right? And they, you want to bring them into your ecosystem. I funnel all of our stuff through chat, through chat funnels as much as I can, because I like to build those audiences that I can market to on Facebook so that I can have the ads and, the, you know, Um, all of this stuff, whether it's through ads or again, organic traffic, like through listings or inserts, that sort of stuff. I try to funnel all of that there so that I can continue to build my lists because inside my chat funnels, I get an email subscription. I get an SMS subscription and I get a messenger or an Instagram direct subscription. Um, again, the reason why I do this is it's a great solution for automation, scalability, consistent messaging, and we can personalize and engage, um, people individually within the chat funnels. Now, why I'm using chatbots, and bear in mind, this information is actually five years old. Um, this was back from 2016. I'm, I'm looking for updated data now on the current monthly active users. But back in 2016, there were 3.9 billion people across the world, across Facebook's family of apps, WhatsApp, Instagram Direct, and Messenger that were active every month. They messaged somebody every single month on those apps. And that's huge. And the, and the number's only gone up because of the pandemic. We're seeing a massive rise in chatbot and messaging in messaging services. 
And some of the key benefits that I see is that one, we can achieve multiple objectives simultaneously. So like I mentioned, let's say one objective is I want to build an audience. So the first step is they sign up. They're automatically subscribed to my messenger list. Then I can get them to sign up to be an SMS subscriber. I can also get them to sign up to be an email subscriber. So I got three objectives right there in the chat funnel. But the main objective could be building our influencer squad, which is always the main primary objective because it's like a deeper audience for us. From there, if they become influencers with us, then we can ask them to purchase more products and that sort of thing. But the main thing for this to work is you really need to have that solid call to action, that, that solid hook, um, whatever that may be. Again, if it's just a register your purchase and get a free ebook of recipes, nobody cares about that because literally Google, like you can go to Google, you can get any recipe you want. You, you don't need to give someone your email address for a shitty PDF that you can find on Google. You need to make sure that the, the hook, the call to action is actually really gonna benefit your people. And if you're not getting people to go through your, your inserts, they're not registering, then there's something wrong with your 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 hook. Then maybe the insert needs to be redesigned. Maybe you need to have a better hook. Maybe you need to you know, think about how you can benefit them more. The other benefits of chat marketing is the most amazing and that I've seen still to this day, the open rates and the click-through rates and messenger messaging, chat marketing, way better than email. And it is fully customizable. So we do, again, like I mentioned, we do all of our applications in Messenger because we get first-party data gathering, which is incredibly important now um, with apps not being able to pixel and not being able to retarget. So we can get the information directly from our consumers, our customers, so that we can then implement changes, release new products, you know, respond if they have issues, that sort of stuff. Um, there's a ton of social sharing that you can do. You can ask people to share directly in Instagram Direct, directly in Messenger. You have consistency in delivery and follow-up, massive amounts of increased purchasing, custom messaging, and then obviously immediate action taking. So I'm going to breeze through this slide because this is really, again, if you're not using chat marketing as a part of your marketing deck, you need to because every single chat platform in the world is really retooling itself so that businesses can build automation on top of their platforms. Apple and Android, for example, they own 99% of the market share um, in, in just America, right? In the US market, which is primarily the your you know most of your market as well, selling on amazon.com. Apple has been testing iMessage for business, which is basically chatbots since 2018. Um, that is a private beta. You have to apply and it costs a lot of money to get in. But Android, uh, starting two years ago in 2019, they started rolling out RCS, which is which stands for Rich Communication Services, which is designed to replace SMS. And the reason why they're rolling it out is it's basically think about like iMessage when you if you have an iPhone, you send a message and it's blue. Um, you know, you're using the i or the uh, iOS network. You're using that that network versus like the SMS service, which is a different protocol. Suffice to say, RCS is built specifically so that you could have chat automation. So. The reason why they're doing this is because they know that that's what the market demands. They know that people want to communicate with each other. They want to communicate with businesses over chat. If you're not integrating it as a part of your marketing strategy now, you are literally going to be losing out on thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in the future. Um, why I'm saying that now is for years, I was saying WhatsApp is coming and Instagram direct messaging is coming, but those are all live right now. You can actually get into the Instagram and start using chatbots on Instagram right now today, and you could apply for WhatsApp. So Danish, you had said, you know, like in the, in Europe and UK, sales are hard. Well, WhatsApp is used a ton in Europe. And so integrating it as a chatbot in your business would be a great strategy if you sell in Europe. So NLP stands for natural language processing. AI, artificial intelligence, is making SMS, so short message service, the text messages even more automatable. I'm seeing instances now where you can start to detect sentiment where people can reply like, yes, no, it'll be positive, negative. Um, it's not perfect yet, but that is in the future. And I see that coming as a real possibility in the future for Amazon sellers. So some documented return on investments with chatbots in Instagram specifically. Um, we've seen 60% reduc reduction in customer support costs, tripling sales in two months, 522% increase in masterclass signups. So you know, if you're not just in Ecom, but you also do info products, this is huge. Sales boost by 30%, 740% lift in engagement, lowering lead cost by 50%, increasing email subscribers by 50%, lead volume by 10 times. Now, this is, I'm going to spend 
more time here talking about what you can do today to start marketing uh, for Q4 within Instagram if you are using Instagram in your business. I'm really excited about this because this is new this year. I've been a part of this beta testing this since January, um, but now it's actually up and running. You have these four things that I will walk you through. Comment growth tools, story mentions, keywords, and influencer directed keywords. So this may sound like gibberish to you now, but I'm going to explain with some imagery and whatnot what that means and how you can use it in your business. So within ManyChat, within Instagram, you can set up a keyword or this is called the, the comment reply tool inside uh, Instagram. Basically, what you do is any post that you make on Instagram, you can turn it into basically an automated, you can automate a reply to that, to anybody that comments on it. You can automate a reply in Messenger, just like, sorry, in Instagram Direct, just like you could in Messenger. And you can set this. So in this example, um, the brand is saying comment jacket. And then anybody that comments jacket gets that message. Now, um, I would actually do something more along the lines of this, where, where we've done in the past, you know, tell us a, a favorite holiday you know, memory that you have, and we will direct message you the details for how you can, you know, participate in this giveaway. And then over on the right is where the bot takes over. And then you can guide them through same, just like you can within messenger where you have, you know, buttons that advance and, you know, it could be very simple where you say comment jacket and tag three of your friends. Now that's actually a violation of Facebook's terms of service. So don't do that specifically, you know, say jacket, comment jacket, we'll message you. But uh, the point is, you could say comment jacket and we'll direct message you the link or the discount code. And it could just be a single message. We say, hey, thanks for commenting. Here's the discount code. Or it could be very complex where you get you know, them to sign up for your email list in order to get the discount code, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is a story mention reply. So um, if you are familiar with how Instagram works, when somebody mentions you in a story, it will show up in your direct messages. It'll show up in your inbox as uh, so you mentioned Fletcher Goods in your story. It'll say on the other side, so-and-so mentioned you in their story. And this is an automated story mention reply. So anytime that anybody messages us in our brand, the first time we send them a message that says, essentially, thank you so much for, for tagging us. That photo is amazing. Um, by the way, if you want more information on an ambassador program that we have where you can earn free products, get money, et cetera, et cetera, tap one of the buttons below, or you can apply directly in Instagram. And we have the application process directly in Instagram direct message, just like this. And now this is a keyword trigger. So here you're telling people to message you the word discount, and then the discount will trigger the automation. So in this instance, the, the thing that triggered the automation was the the story mention in this instance, the, the thing that will trigger the automation is when people message you discount. And then this would be an example of an influencer, um, you know, tagging a brand and saying, you know, message this brand fall wet bag to get a discount or the details. So I'm going to leave this up for a little while. If you guys have um, what I would do, if, if you have more questions and you want to download the slides, you can go either to this link, link.tca.life or this QR code. And then it'll open up in the chat bot. And then inside the chat bot, what it'll do is it'll just get your uh, your email address. And then we um, deliver the e we deliver the slides directly in your email. So it's what I'm what I'm wanting to do there is kind of show you how you got the chat bot, and then you can tie it directly into your email as well. So I'll leave that up for people to see. But uh, Dinesh, are you still? Yep. Okay. Oh my God. This is so much informative, uh, full of uh, knowledge. Uh, you have bombarded everybody. <laughs> Sorry. It's so, it's so, it's so much. I know. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But it's amazing knowledge. Uh, whoever is picking up, uh, picking up well, because, uh, whoever has idea about it, have a little bit of a background, then they must be understanding it quite well. Excellent, uh, session. Uh, thank you, Paul. It was really good. Uh, let me have some questions with you and uh, we can wrap it up quickly. Um, all right. So Mr. Shahriyar, okay. Mr. Shahriyar Ghazali is asking, 
if you can kindly elaborate the concept of arbitrage in detail. Yeah, so essentially arbitrage, really what it means is you're buying low and you're selling high. And you're buying how it's typically done. Um, I'm not sure if you know if you have discount secondhand stores in Pakistan. In America, you know, we have TJ Maxx, Ross, Marshalls. There's a whole bunch of those. Do you, do you have like the secondhand, like where if it doesn't sell in the main store, it goes to a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have so many markets here locally. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what it is, is if you have like a name brand something, um, you would buy it on like Marshalls. So something, let's say a pair of pants that normally cost $200. You can go to the store and you buy them for 20. Um, arbitrages will take those and then they list them on Amazon. And there's whole courses on arbitrage. I don't do arbitrage. Um, arbitrage is great because it's not too much cash up front. You're not having to spend $10,000 on an inventory order. It could just be a couple hundred bucks. You know, you list your product and then you get your 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 money back, you know, how whenever you sell it. So that's one method of arbitrage. The other one that I was kind of talking about was more like drop shipping. Um, so earlier on, I had mentioned one way that I had heard in the past that people were making money. And again, bear in mind, this is now against terms of service on the Facebook platform. So if you do this on flight on Facebook, you will be violating terms of service and you risk your account your marketplace account being shut down, but there are other marketplaces that you can do this on. So one thing that people were doing would be say, looking on Facebook marketplace for deals, right? So let's say just like you're doing research on Amazon. And then you go to Amazon and you see what what's selling well on Amazon. Then you go to Facebook Marketplace, look for that exact same thing. And oftentimes, like what people were doing is they're buying, say, like this bought this. I used this before already, but this mug on Amazon for 30 bucks and then they sell it on Facebook Marketplace for 35. And right. it's that's that's one method that they were doing in our in, in Facebook. That's a method of arbitrage, but it's that's more drop shipping. Perfect. All right, uh, this guy, Sharyar, has another question. Uh, what's the best way to revive a dead listing? Ooh, I don't know that there's a best way. There's a lot of ways. Um, really, all Amazon cares about is whether or not they're making money off of you. And how they determine that is, you know, how much traffic is your listing getting? How much of that traffic is actually converting to a purchase or adding to cart? Um, out of those people, how are they finding you too? Like what's the, what are the keyword searches that they're doing? So you need to make sure first and foremost that your key, your, your, your listing is well optimized. Um, if the listing itself is not well optimized, then all the re like the reviving work that you're going to try to do will go, it won't be, it won't do anything. So for example, actually I'll just use this. We have one of our main listings is under a black hat attack right now. Um, and it, they, they put it in the adult product category. So you can't find it in search. So we need to start once we get it relisted correctly, which has been, this is like a two month thing. It's really painful. We've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars because of this. Um, when we get it fixed, our process that we're going to do, it's not necessarily dead, but it's been getting low sales for a really long time. So what we need to do is we're going to start pumping in external traffic, having people do a search find buy, and generally what we do is we'll just do a partial rebate or we'll do a coupon code or we'll just use like the social sharing coupon code. What I like to do is a diversity of traffic from everywhere. So I would have Google ads. I'd have influencers sending traffic. I would be running ads on Facebook. I'll be running ads on Instagram. I'd be sending traffic for my email. I'm even going to have Isabella at Rank Bell um, send in some traffic too. And that's what we do. So basically, reviving a dead listing, first step, make sure the, the listing itself is optimized. Make sure that you have really good images, bullet points, enhanced product, A-plus product content, whatever. Once you make sure that it's well-optimized, that it's indexing well, then I start sending a shitload of traffic from everywhere. That's And then make sure that it converts. Perfect. Okay, um, so Paul, um, I know it's a bit more... Uh, expected uh longer than expected session now uh, yeah i can I can, say, I can say i don't have anything if you um i think my next thing is later in the day so i'm more than happy to stay and answer questions thank you a mm -hmm. uh, couple of more questions um uh, what are the products to consider to launch in quarter four what product categories are the hottest categories uh to launch in quarter four well that's so 
in my opinion, if you're looking at that, you're looking at building a business wrong. And here's why this is, I don't think that you should just be looking at a quarter four only. I think that what, you, what again, everything that I talked about was brand building. All of the things that has, have helped us, the reasons why we've gotten those placements are because we built the brand, right? Mm -hmm. So quarter four doesn't really make sense for us because we are, we sell summer seasonal products. Now we do have other, other products that we would look at launching, but I'm not looking at Amazon searches for launching products. I'm going to my customer base and I'm asking them, what do you want us to, what do you want to buy from us? And we know that they want to buy X, Y, and Z. And so we have all of our product development built out based on what they want to say. So if you haven't started, if you haven't launched a business yet, the way that you want to look at your business is a solid, cohesive brand, right? Yeti, for example, Yeti sells products that insulate things. So they started out with the coolers and then they moved on to these tumblers and stuff. But the, the, the brand is all about keeping, I, I, I would say like Yeti is all about tough, well-made products that do a good, a better job than other products, keeping your things cold or keeping them warm. So Yeti, for example, would not be launching. I, I would, I would be surprised if they launched something like a face mask because it's not on brand for them. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense unless it was like a joke, but you get my point. So that um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you an opinion on what you should launch in Q4 because I think that that would be a disservice to you because if all you're looking at is like how you can make money only quickly here, um, you're not going to be building a valuable business and all of the work that you're doing, which is a significant amount of work ultimately would probably go to in my head, it's like renting a house versus buying a house. I'd rather buy the house so that I could own it and sell it or turn it into a rental. Because if all I did was rent my house, which would be like launching new products all the time, um, I wouldn't really be able to exit my business and all the work that I'm doing. I might make money, but ultimately my goal is to build an asset that I can sell. Okay, perfect. Uh, one more uh, very uh, important and very probing question, uh, Paul, uh, that how private label sellers can still make profits uh, keeping the current uh, high uh, cost prices and logistic issues and mm -hmm. uh, containers uh, unavailabilities and a lot of issues coming in that is actually, you know, spiking up the cost. So how a private label seller can still make profits? Uh, build a brand. If you have a brand that people know that they know that you're associated with quality um, and they know that you are the best, the category leader, then they expect you to be the best. They expect you to cost the most. They expect you, you know, people, Apple, Apple has built a brand where people expect to pay more. If okay. Apple were to release a product that would, you know, cost less than like a Chromebook, for example, I don't think that people would trust it, to be honest, just because people Apple has built this expectation that they're the best they're the highest quality and that you need to pay for that. And so that's that all goes into brand building. If you build a brand where um, and this is a great essay, I would let me share this with you. Um, it's called 1000 True Fans by Kevin Kelly, and I'll put this in the chat here. Danish. And then you can right. send that to your, your group. But this essay was written, basically it talks about how, if you think that you need to build like this, you know, you need to build a million followers to make money. Really, you only need a, a few really, really engaged followers. You really need just a handful. So if you can build a brand and you can really build that following base, that's super engaged, you, you need less than you think that you do. And the point is that if you do something, you build a product that people, let's say you, you, you were in retail and if it was the type of product that sold out every single time it hit the shelves or it caused the line, you know, people drive out of their way hours. That's the type of brand that you should be thinking about building because that will help you get through the pandemic because when you raise prices, everyone's going to be raising prices. It's going to be coming yeah. because you, there's no way that sellers are going to be able to stay in business with, I mean, our shipping costs normally is $8,000 per container. When we did our shipment that was three months late, it was 24,000. Like 
that is a massive difference. And if we want to maintain profitability and stay in business, we have to raise our prices. If all people cared about was buying from us because we were the cheapest, we couldn't raise our prices. But people buy from us because they know that we're the best. And the reason they know that we're the best is because we've spent a lot of time building our brand, getting into those best of lists, working with influencers and that sort of thing. So that was a very long answer. But the best way that you can insulate yourself from these types of things is think long term. Don't think what's the best category that I can start selling in in Q4, which is a great question. If all you wanted to do was build a holiday Q4 type brand. Um, but if you're thinking long term, what's the best move today that will help feed my family in three years? Or what's the best move now so that when I exit my business in five years, how can I build a billion dollar brand instead of just a hundred thousand dollar brand? Think bigger. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you, Paul, uh, for this very, very informative, very detailed session. It's been a pleasure to have you today. Uh, I think the audience have really much enjoyed, although it's uh, too much information for people, maybe information overload for some of the people who don't have much idea about it. But it was a really, really important and very uh, key points that you have covered in this session, which is really important for one to understand about building a brand and bringing up external traffic to Amazon listings. It's not only the Amazon. It's not only the Amazon PPC only. You need to bring more external traffic and have to go out of the way. You need to think out of the box. You need to be more creative in what you uh, what you do and how you are selling your products. So this is really important. Uh, Thank you, Paul, for being with us. Thank you for answering all the queries, all the questions. Uh, that's been a really amazing session. I, I would be really uh, honored to have you again on our platform and to uh, talk talk about some different uh, important yeah. and amazing topics in the future. Absolutely. And I, I mean, like I said, I can come back and do the talk just specifically on influencers or one specifically on chatbots. Um, you're right. This is a ton of information because it's like, <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Thank you for then th thank you again Paul. Uh, I think uh, we have a very detailed session today. It's amazing. Thank you. Absolutely. For, have a good day and take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Right. Yep, you too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.